Hello, and welcome back to another Monster Monday, a series where I draw a creature from D&D, and I talk about its lore and its mythology and what it's like in-game. I should maybe change how I introduce these videos, because yet again we have another creature from D&D, or another creature from some kind of mythology, that has found its way into D&D, and actually isn't even in this current edition of Dungeons & Dragons, so I've had to homebrew something to fit it in. But as always, these are really great creatures, that my patrons over on Patreon have voted for. They really wanted to see this specific creature, ideally with a set of homebrew stats so they can use it in their games, something which I was very happy to oblige. So make sure to check down below in the description box because you will find a link to where you can get this for free. But just in case, it's also on D&D Beyond on the homebrew section. If you look for Arcane Forge, you should be able to find it. But today we are going to be talking about kitsunes, or kitsunes, or I don't know. It's a Japanese fox spirit that I am going to be butchering the name of, I'm sure, numerous times throughout the video. So I apologise. I believe kitsune is the correct pronunciation. There's something about kitsunes with like an S at the end that just makes me think of some really sort of like rough, gruff footballer type that's just like, all right, mate, you got a kitsune, mate got a couple of kitsunes, yeah. I don't know, it just doesn't sound quite right. So, kitsune, but I might screw that up. Either way, I've rambled. So let's get started with today's video, and let's draw some fox people. Kitsunes can be interpreted in one of two distinctly different ways, each with its own merits and flaws, both inspired by the same original source material, folk tales, myths, and legends. Kitsune is literally the Japanese word for fox, and historically in D&D this has seen this creature appear as either a benevolent or adversarial magical creature being depicted as a giant fox, often with one or up to nine tails. It filled the role of something like a direwolf at its worst or a kirin at its best. It's perhaps far more faithful representation, and the one that I will choose to draw most influence from going forward can be found in Pathfinder, the sister RPG to Dungeons & Dragons, where these creatures are a humanoid, fox-like player species of shape-shifting fey creatures. So strap in, because it's about to get furry up in here, Uwu notices your character, Uwu. Kitsunes are very real mythological creatures, hailing from Japanese folklore. They're a type of yokai, nature spirits, or otherwise supernatural beings popular in ancient Japanese stories, which are still present in modern culture as well. Their actual origins are believed to stem from Chinese stories of the Huijing, a near-identical nine-tailed fox creature detailed in a legendary story called the Classic of Mountains and Seas sometime in the 4th to 1st century BCE, allegedly written by Yu the Great, a mythically famous king and founder of the Xia dynasty. Although much like the epic works of Homer's Odyssey or the Iliad, this story is now believed to have been penned by several authors, perhaps none of which actually being Yu the Great. In both the Japanese and earlier Chinese stories, these many-tailed foxes are considered shapeshifters, Gyopu, a Chinese historian and poet in the late 200s CE, is believed to have said the following about this creature's shapeshifting powers, quote, When a fox is 50 years old, it can transform itself into a woman. When 100 years old, it becomes a beautiful female, or a spirit medium, or an adult male. Such beings are able to know things at more than a thousand miles distance. They can poison men by sorcery, or possess and bewilder them, so that they lose their memory and knowledge. And when a fox is a thousand years old, it ascends to heaven and becomes a celestial fox." End quote. As for this creature's nine tails, aside from just looking extremely cool, according to an ancient text known as The Debates in the White Tiger Hall, this symbolizes the fox's abundant progeny. A bit of a weird one, but I mean, you do you, ancient China. I'm happy to draw more tails, but I'm glad humans don't sprout an extra butt cheek or something every time we have a child, or Eddie Murphy would be some nightmarish flesh mass by now. Since the Edo period of Japanese history, foxes, along with badgers and cats, have all been seen as familiars or magical creatures, often associated with witchcraft more akin to troublemaking spirits, goblins, or other untrustworthy fey creatures 
in Western folklore. This is likely because of the role of foxes in traditional Japanese and Chinese legends surrounding ghosts and death. Foxes in Chinese traditions have always had a connection to life, death, and beyond, to the extent that in the Tang Dynasty, it was traditional to make offerings to foxes in your bedchamber, giving them food and drink that they could consume freely in the hopes of earning their favor. They were very much seen as a sign of freedom because no one can force a fox to arrive or command it to do their bidding. They, like house cats who venture into multiple homes to be fed by many different people, do not serve a single master save for themselves. This unruly behavior and symbolism of freedom over authority caused an imperial edict by the very threatened powers that be during the Song Dynasty to ban all fox spirit cults and to destroy all fox spirit shrines. But the practice was so widespread, and like the fox spirit itself, its practitioners were so sly and secretive that even beyond that point, it was a well-known saying at the time that where there is no fox demon, no village can be established. In fact, the word kitsune, while referring to foxes literally, means that which always comes, or another translation might be to come and sleep in Japanese, referring to the hope to be blessed by the presence of one of these creatures. But demonicness, a fox demon, and necromancy surrounding foxes in ancient stories are ever present in this time as well. Of course, demon and the associations that we have with that word in the Western world are slightly different to the translation in Japanese. They were more like spirits, but their ties to death are undeniable. The mischief that foxes would get up to, not unlike boggles, involved things like disrupting homes. These events were referred to as hauntings. Foxes were said to transform into human beings by finding a human skull, placing it atop their head and wearing it like a crown. They then could assume that particular person's form. That reminds me of a particular fox I became very well acquainted with where I used to live. I moved during the pandemic away from Edinburgh to a nearby town, but while I lived in Edinburgh, my home overlooked the graveyard. In the back communal garden area of my flat, a three-legged fox used to turn up fairly regularly. They looked a little bit gaunt, a little bit hungry, but were pleasant enough, a very sweet and beautiful creature. I can't help but think that perhaps they had to alleviate that leg themselves if they were trapped somewhere. My walk home from a bakery that I used to work at had my shift end at about four o'clock in the morning. And I remember walking past this graveyard on those nights, and occasionally I would see that fox. One day I decided to venture into the graveyard and found this fox scurry into a hole that had burrowed into someone's grave. The grave was incredibly ancient, the letters atop it being almost impossible to read, most of them having been scraped off by weathering and time. From a name that used to, I presume, say Richard Robertson, all that was left were the words Hard Robertson. And it's in Hard Robertson's grave that this three-legged fox decided to dwell and make its home. From there on in, every time I would see this fox, I would welcome Hard Robertson and would wish him well, trying to find food around my neighborhood. Maybe I was visited by a kitsune. But I also mentioned in my Will of the Wisp video about the kitsune bee, orbs of spiritual flame who dance around the tails of fox spirits. The presence of these orbs are sometimes said to be created spontaneously when there's a high amount of yokai activity in an area, specifically that activity which belongs to kitsunes. But they can also be conjured by kitsunes specifically to lead wandering humans to stray from their path into perhaps dangerous territory or into traps created by the kitsune. The ghost lights that they create are often associated with souls or spirits, and so a connection to death, to the afterlife, and to the spirit world, depending on your perspective, always shroud stories of the kitsune. The kitsune in Japanese legends is not distinguished from traditional, normal foxes. Rather, foxes are considered a kind of spirit, manifesting more power over time, and boy, do kitsunes have a lot of time on their hands. They're pretty much considered to be agelessly immortal, or rather, immortal without showing any signs of weakness or decrepitness over time. Instead, much like the dragons of D&D, they only get more powerful and more spiritual, more otherworldly and more deified over time. It's said that yokai of all kinds are pretty intelligent, at least more intelligent than we'd expect our garden variety fox to be. But for a kitsune, their intelligence grows with their age, with some legends stating that they grow a new tail every 100 years. 
up to a maximum of nine. With each tail, their power and wisdom increases as well. The Kyubi no Kitsune, or Fox of Nine Tails, is the most powerful form of a Kitsune, although there are many popular stories featuring Kitsune with one, five, or seven tails as well, indicating their level of potency. A nine-tailed fox who reaches 1,000 years old is said to turn bright white or pure gold and gains infinite wisdom and the ability to see everything that happens all across the world simultaneously, also known as omniscience. At this point, the kitsune is referred to as a tenko, or a heavenly fox, and it can ascend to the heavens become pretty godlike, actually. While stories vary, the consensus is that somewhere between the age of 50 to 100 years old, presumably when these foxes reach spiritual maturity, they gain the ability to shapeshift their most notable power. They use this to transform their appearance to resemble humans, fox-human hybrids, and various other things. But most commonly, they appear as beautiful maidens, young children, or elderly men in folklore at least. Interestingly, a huge part of these stories seems to show a fluidity between biological sex and gender in these creatures, often choosing to be perceived as masculine in one moment and feminine the next, depending on their mood or what their situation requires. This has led to the description known as Kitsune Gao, or fox-faced, which refers to anyone with a narrow face, with close-set eyes, thin eyebrows, and high cheekbones. This has generally been considered highly attractive traditionally in Japan, regardless of who has these features. That said, it's always wise to make sure that this beautiful person you're attracted to isn't actually a kitsune in disguise because they can be terrible tricksters and pranksters who could lead you to the spirit world or even to death. So one must always check to see if the person that they are courting as a coating of fine hair. Something, something which it is believed Marilyn Monroe prided herself on, giving her a sheen or glow in the camera light. Other foxy giveaways would be that this person, or rather their shadow, would always be the shadow of a fox rather than a human, and the reflection in a mirror might show their true foxy form. Kitsunes have other magical abilities that might cause someone's perception of reality to become truly askew, however, so you may not be able to rely on looking out for their shadow or finding a reflection. They can possess people, as a ghost might, piloting someone's unsuspecting body, requiring an exorcism to relieve someone of their fox spirit. They can conjure fire and lightning, sometimes for their own amusement, but equally to devastating effect. They can make wishes come true and pluck your dreams from your sleeping head, forming them into tangible realities when you wake. They can fly, turn invisible, and create incredibly convincing illusions if it suits their needs. In Japanese folklore, the kitsunes are roughly categorized into two different subgroups. The Zenko, who use their powers and wisdom for good, and the Yako, or the Nogitsune, who are more mischievous kitsune at best, or outright malicious at worst. If you happen to fall under the spell of a Nogitsune, and they have warped reality so thoroughly that you can't tell who or what you're dealing with, you can be sure to catch them out by either getting them very, very distracted or incredibly drunk, which often causes them to forget to transform their tails, so you can tell who around you is a kitsune in disguise, or better yet, bring your faithful dog companion with you. Kitsunes hate dogs, and a single bark from a dog is enough to see one revert to its true form and scurry away into the night. Hang on for a second. Just while I've got your attention, I want to take a second, and I will be as brief as I possibly can, to say a massive thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. For those of you who don't know, channels like myself and probably most other content creators rely on Patreon to make the content that we do. This probably won't be a shock, but I spend the equivalent time of a full-time job working purely on Arcing Forge stuff, whether it's illustrating everything, spending time researching and writing scripts, which might take days, editing all the videos, and responding to as many of your comments as I possibly can. It takes up a while, basically. And while I absolutely love doing it, Myrtle has a hefty, hefty snack budget, and I want to make sure that the lights stay on here at the Arcane Forge. So if we were to meet in person, and you'd not think twice about buying me a cup of coffee, or a cup of tea, or something like that, then I'd urge you to head over to Patreon and help me out, for perhaps the price of a cup of coffee. Just like these particular patrons, who this month are Aldrin, Christian Palmer Smith, 
AJ, Dominique Jolly, Sam Hickson, Dan Waterman, Tamaling, Steve Harrison, Max Copeland, Styrax, Ryan H, Colby Monroe, Darth Gaetana, Max Schluter, Peter Belf, Alfie Wolf, Matt Lichtenwalner, Braxton Hudson, Cav Manick, Bartle Gruff the Great, Daniel Williams, Nathan Stratton, Ethan Dibby, Amanda and Jake Westfall, The Smiling Sadist, John Foster, Yorick Beese, Nap in Camo, George Punton, Raptor Dio, Nicholas G. Silva, and Duck Quack. In addition to helping me to actually keep making these videos, they get a bunch of rewards, some of which include things like chatting with me one-to-one -one every single month, and a bunch of others, but I'll make sure to leave a link down below so you can find out for yourselves. But anyway, thank you for your support, and for those who are paying for this content to be made, and paying for those viewers who can't afford to pay for this content to be made. You are all legendary, so thank you so much, and let's get back to the topic at hand. Where were we? As I mentioned at the start of this video, Kitsunes aren't strictly a part of D&D at the moment, in 5th edition at least, at the time of making this video, which seems like a missed opportunity. So I thought it would be a good idea to homebrew something for you all to use in your campaigns for free. You can find a link to that down below in my description box. I like to make things on D&D Beyond, so you can click that link and get access to this free homebrew. We have, as usual, an absolute ton of information to go on to create this creature, but one guide we can use is that D&D's sister role-playing game Pathfinder in that game, Kitsunes are actually a playable species. So rather than a monster specifically, I thought it'd be fun to come up with some rules for how players could embody these creatures, because I give a lot of tools to dungeon masters in my videos. Let's give something to the players. There's actually not a huge amount of info that I could find online about Pathfinder's take on the Kitsune, but I did find one specific quote from the Inner Sea Races book, I believe, used on multiple websites, which says, quote, Kitsune or fox folk are vulpine shapeshifters known for their love of both trickery and art. Kitsune possess two forms, that of an attractive human of slender build with salient eyes and their true form of an anthropomorphic fox. Despite an irrepressible penchant for deception, Kitsune prize loyalty and make true companions. They delight in the arts, particularly riddles and storytelling, and settle in ancestral clans, taking their wisdom from both the living and spirits. Quick-witted and nimble, Kitsune make excellent bards and rogues. It's not uncommon for one to pursue sorcery, while those few born with white fur and pale eyes usually become oracles." End quote. There were some really interesting divergences that I found online in regards to the relationship between Pathfinder's elves and Kitsune's as well. Some accounts said that, much like centaurs, Kitsune's cared very little for humans, but would trade with elves much more readily, while other accounts claimed that Kitsune's cannot stand even the sight of elves and have a fierce rivalry with them. Both of these seem really fascinating ideas to include in our homebrew, so maybe we can use that, or maybe I should leave that up to the DM to decide what would be more fitting for their own homebrew world. Fundamentally, I don't want to exclusively use Pathfinder's version here, because I feel like the folklore and original myths surrounding these creatures should be our guide just as much. But with that said, here's what I came up with for the homebrew player race species of the Kitsune, which like I say, you can find on D&D Beyond and in the link down below in my description box. I said that Kitsunes are fox-faced creatures of the Feywilds, venturing into the material plane mostly for entertainment or for some more important calling. They have a symbiotic relationship with the mortals of the material plane who often present them with offerings of food and gold in exchange for blessings and protection. Sometimes this protection is sought from the Kitsune itself as they can also be troublemaking tricksters whose practical joking and deceptive nature can lead to deaths in the mortals they toy with. Ultimately, an encounter with a kitsune is seen as a moment highly dependent on luck and will either bring incredibly good fortune or a cursed existence. Kitsunes are magical beings who regularly shift their forms to better suit their needs. Most often they resemble humanoid anthropomorphic foxes, but just as regularly visit mortal settlements in the form of a true quadrupedal fox. They have no particular preference for either form, and just as regularly transform into various other people and creatures depending on what the situation they are presented with demands. Kitsunes have no particular preference for biological sex or gender, and will happily shapeshift to align their form to be that which best suits them at any given time, effortlessly assuming the identity of a male human in one moment, or an elven woman the next. Kitsunes do not age as mortals might. Being spirits native to the Feywilds, 
they only grow in strength, wisdom and power as they age. This is reflected in their physical appearance. Rather than showing some degree of frailty, as we might expect in humans for example, kitsunes instead grow additional tails as they age. A kitsune who reaches 100 years old grows a second tail, and an additional one for every 100 years thereafter, until they have a full nine tails at their back. A kitsune is considered an adult upon reaching their 100th year, and a cub before this time. It's not well known if a kitsune can die of old age or not, but they tend to retreat further into their spiritual development and solitude as they age becoming more detached from the affairs of mortals, and this seclusion can often be confused for them shuffling off this mortal coil. I've mentioned that there are two subraces. I said while the two kitsune sp subspecies do not appear wholly dissimilar in appearance, their attitudes, motivations, and behavior seem to be wildly different. The Zenko kitsune are generally more wise, caring to strangers, and more in tune with the spiritual and natural magic. The Yako kitsune people are seen as more chaotic and troublemaking spirits, with an affinity for theft and secrecy. I incline people to pick one of those two subraces at the end of creating their character. But in terms of traits, I've given them a plus two charisma, although with the current rules, you can pick whatever stat increase feels right to you. But I put charisma just in case people are using the original 5e rules, as they are inherently magical creatures of the Feywilds. In terms of age, I reiterated the same deal about the number of tails, supplementing that in addition, if a kitsune lives to be 1,000 years of age, their fur will generally turn a bright white or golden colour, and they are given the title of Tenko, meaning Celestial Fox. These ancients are considered the elders and leaders of kitsune society. I said that kitsunes tend to be 5 to 6 feet tall, and that their size is medium. Their main rule is that of shapeshift, and basically gave them a very diluted version, or perhaps I suppose a more potent version, with limited uses of the wild shape rule that druids have access to. I said that you can use your action to magically assume the shape of a fox spirit. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. You regain expended uses when you finish a short or long rest. A fox spirit resembles a traditional fox in many ways, however they are considered fey creatures, and use the stat block associated with blink dogs instead. Thereafter, I basically just use the rules for wild shape, but you can use it specifically to turn into a blink dog shaped like a fox, I guess. That seemed like the most appropriate, but if that seems overpowered, then please feel free in your own uses to translate this into something like a cat, or a dog, or a dire wolf if that seems more appropriate. I'll leave it up to the DM's discretion, but I felt like a blink dog seemed like a good compromise that has something magical to its nature, something fey, and something canine, a bit like a fox. But definitely make sure to check with your DM if you're using this homebrew and haven't consulted them yet. I gave these creatures dark vision, as almost all creatures tend to have. Their animalistic senses allow them to have proficiency in the perception skill, and like elves and other creatures of the Feywild, I said that they have advantage on saving throws against being charmed and magic can't put them to sleep. In terms of languages, I said, that they can speak and read and write common and also sylvan. The two differentiating subspecies of Yako and Zenko are detailed as follows. I said that as Yako Kitsune, your fey heritage manifests in a troublemaking and chaotic nature. You tend to be more adept at transformative and illusion-based magic than your other Kitsune cousins, which lend itself well to the life of a thief. This calling is something that you may find hard to resist, and the mortal public knows to be wary of this nature. Being a Yako Kitsune doesn't make you a bad person, but chaos follows you more so than the average adventurer. Here I said that your dexterity increases by one to give you slightly more deft hands and a stealthy build, but again, if you're using the new rules of D&D, I encourage you to use whatever stats seem appropriate to you to increase. I gave them a rule called Cunning Thief that grants them proficiency in thieves' tools and a poisoner's kit, and their sly nature grants them a choice of one of the two following skills to have proficiency in as well, acrobatics, deception, stealth, and sleight of hand. The really fun bit comes in a rule called Shapeshifter that says that you know the minor illusion cantrip, and starting at third level, you can cast the Alter Self spell once with this trait, and you can regain that ability to cast this spell after you finish a long rest, using Charisma as your spellcasting ability for these spells if it's at all relevant. So that's your more shapeshifting enhanced Kitsune build, but then I also gave rules for the Zenko, the more benevolent subspecies. I said that Zenko Kitsunes are among the most blessed and magical creatures of the Feywilds. As one of their kin, you are more in tune with the natural forces, the material plane, and the spiritual energies of the Feywilds. Zenko Kitsunes use their magical prowess to heal the sick, bring good fortune to their allies, and conjure powerful fire spells to incinerate their foes. 
to many cultures, even seeing a Zenko Kitsune from a distance is considered a sign of good fortune. Here, I increased your wisdom score by one. I allowed you to speak, read, and write one extra language of your choice, which might be elven if you're more likely to trade with other fey creatures, but I left that up to you. And I gave them two spellcasting features in a rule called Kitsunibi. I said that you know the dancing lights can trip and... You can also cast the Fairy Fire spell once with this trait, regaining the ability to cast it when you finish a long rest. But I also said, in a rule called Blessing of the Spirit World, that you may add your proficiency bonus to the damage of a spell that deals fire or lightning damage, or the HP recovered from a healing spell once with this trait, regaining the ability to use this when you finish a short or long rest. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and learning about the kitsune and helping me to build these creatures into something that you can use in your own campaigns. If you do end up rolling up a kitsune character, I'd love to hear what you come up with for them. If you play one in Pathfinder, I'd love to hear about that as well, so make sure to comment down below. I really love this illustration. I had so much fun drawing her, giving her sort of samurai-themed armor, and lots of ties back to original Japanese patterns and kitsune masks including these sort of orbs of spiritual fire that she's conjuring up to throw as perhaps eldritch blasts or scorching rays, who knows. But I really like her. I really love this illustration. And I loved learning about this mythology with you. If you enjoyed this video as well, please make sure to leave a little like down below. Perhaps favorite this video and share it with some of your pals. While you're at it, maybe subscribe to the channel as well because we are just little fox cubs ourselves, desperately hoping to grow a few extra tails expand the channel this year. Think of us as the little coffee shop on your street, trying to compete with the likes of Starbucks. Hopefully we'll be around for a while, but only for as long as we can compete, and we need your help to do that. But anyway, until next time, maybe don't trust a fox spirit, but if you give them the right kinds of offerings, they might change your luck for the better. And that's something I think we all need going into 2022, and wishing for this pandemic to finally be over. So until next time, good luck, good fortune, and happy monster hunting.